became a middle grade grad from the year 2012. Uh, and I was an environmental studies major with a focus in policy uh, and also studied Chinese when I was a student at the college. Uh, I now work at the admissions office and, and it's a true privilege uh, to have a wonderful panel uh, of students, staff and faculty as well as alum, al alumni here with us today to talk a little bit more about environmentalism and sustainability and how it relates to Middlebury College. Um, so before I introduce the panel, uh, I do want to sort of lay, lay the foundation just a little bit for what we will be talking about today. Uh, and, and because environmentalism, environmental studies, and sustainability cover so much ground uh, in, in terms of what we do as a college. Uh, you know, we are here in Vermont, which is, um, in terms of its natural environment, an incredibly beautiful and inspiring place. And, you know, early on, I posit that, that folks who, who worked at Middlebury College, students who attended Middlebury College, uh, saw, saw how critical it was and how inspiring it was uh, to preserve this natural environment that surrounds us every day through all the seasons. And as a result, there was a, a certain uh, connection with, with our values as an institution that was embedded really on early on in our culture as an institution around environmentalism as well as sustainability. Uh, and as a result, through the generations, Middlebury has continued to be a leader in the realms of environmental and environmentalism as well as sustainability. And, and that continues today. And I hope that you will learn a lot about that as we, as we talk through different aspects of our work. And another critical theme that you will pick up on is how student directed and student led a lot of this work really is. Uh, so, I, so I am excited to, to share those stories with you here today. So we'll start with uh, with with question with with sorry sorry with that uh, we'll start with the presentation. So just our panelists here today talking a little bit about their own experiences and their own work at the college. And after that, we will transition to to question and answers. Uh, so even at this stage itself, if you do have things that you want to learn more about or questions for our panelists here today, please type in those questions in the Q and A box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. So let's start off with, with Professor Morse. Go ahead. Okay, hopefully you are seeing my screen. Uh, my name's Catherine Morse. This is my 23rd year on the faculty at Millbury, and I'm here representing the 15 faculty who teach in the environmental studies core curriculum, as well as the dozens and dozens of other faculty that contribute to the program. As Neil noted, he was an environmental studies major with a focus in policy. Our major is actually 17 different possible majors, and the first great strength of the major, I believe, is that it's actually uh, a lot of options. So as you can see from the slide, uh, some of our majors are majoring the focus in chemistry and others in history and others in theater, uh, geography, psychology, you name it. Uh, so that breadth across the natural sciences, social sciences, humanities and arts is one of the key aspects of the academic curriculum that uh, makes uh, Middlebury quite distinct. So by the time our students um, seniors and are embarking on their own uh, independent and capstone projects. Uh, their work varies widely across the field of environmental studies. Here's a thesis from two years ago or one year ago uh, 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 from a geology uh, focused student uh, about volcanic deposits in Costa Rica. Uh, and yet here is an environmental policy and English and American literature double major who studied climate change uh, literature and its effectiveness in shaping environmental policy. One of the other quite distinct uh, academic programs we're inordinately proud of perhaps is uh, another option for senior and capstone work uh, called the Environmental Studies Community Engaged Practicum or for short ES401 a senior capstone course in which uh, a group of students divided into teams serve as environmental consultants with community partners, working with those partners 
uh, to um, assist them through research, presentation, development, uh, and applying their hard-won environmental study skills to an environmental problem. And you can learn more about the environmental studies practicum by checking out its webpage. Not only do we have all the learning goals there, but we have some photographs of students and community partners. This one from two years ago. Uh, there's a timeline showing uh, some of the projects that students have done over time. And then if you really want to go deep uh, and look at the presentations that students have given, every group presents to both their community partners and the community every semester. Uh, there is an archive of every single report and project going back uh, to 1999 at least. The course itself goes back to 1988. And you can see the kind of work that our uh, senior students do, both their theses and their community engaged projects. Uh, it is without question one of the strongest undergraduate environmental studies programs in the nation. I get to go around the country consulting with other ES programs at small liberal arts colleges and advising them. And every single time I go to another college, I uh, am glad that I work at Middlebury and that our program is uh, so strong, so well supported by faculty and uh, so integrated into the curriculum of the college as a whole. All right, on to the next. Wonderful, thank you so much, Professor uh, Divya. Hi everyone, um, my name is Divya Gadur and I'm a senior at Middlebury in majoring in environmental chemistry. I am the co-manager of the Sunday Night Environmental Group, which is an environmental group on campus committed to climate justice activism. Um, we've run various different campaigns in the past um, from leading a successful divest campaign, which you might have heard of, where our organizing efforts led to Middlebury successfully divesting from fossil fuels as part of Energy 2028, which um, Jack might um, tell you more about. And some other campaigns are the um, passing anti-fossil fuel infrastructure resolutions in town. So I'm also a community organizer um, around Vermont. So I've worked with 350 Vermont, 350 Vermont and other statewide organizations on efforts such as the Vermont climate strikes, these were just past September, last September and um, youth engagement and um, empowerment within the climate movement. Um, for me, my particular vision and passion for environmentalism at Middlebury is to shape environmental spaces or shape our environmental spaces to be more inclusive and intersectional, um, recognizing how environmentalism intersects with different systems of oppression and injustices um, on a campus like Middlebury. And particularly, you know, within these past few months, I think the racial unrest and um, the nationwide protests throughout the pandemic have exposed um, the racial injustices that many people of color, especially black and indigenous folks of our community in the United States face, but it has also um, played an important, important role in highlighting how white the mainstream environmental movement is. And I think for the past three years um, at Middlebury, I found a wonderful family of organizers at Middlebury and actually like beyond Middlebury throughout the town and throughout Vermont who um, you know, are confronting the problematic parts of the mainstream environmental movement and um, are shaping, or sh trying to shape at least a movement that is built on equity, on inclusion, on justice, on empathy. Um, so I'm excited for all the activists um, out there in the audience who are thinking about joining the Middlebury community and you know, we would love to have you, so thanks. Thank you so much, Tavia. Um, moving on now to, to Jack and Zach. There we go. Can, you can hear me all right? And you can see my screen? All right. Great. Thanks. Would you mind, would you mind Jack, uh, hitting slideshow so we can have it full screen? Thank you. So the bottom of your, yeah, the bottom of your screen, right to, to the right, there we go. Thank you. Okay, now let me go back to the beginning. So um, thank you all for coming and um, I'm really happy to be able to share some of the 
work that's gone on for um, quite a while at Middlebury. I thought I'd just walk you through quickly um, our most current uh, Middlebury-wide effort to address the climate crisis, which is called Energy 2028. And I want to walk through a couple of the major milestones along the way uh, that brought us here, and then talk a little bit about, you know, what are the elements of um, Middlebury's leadership in uh, sustainability and environmental stewardship and, um, you know, what makes it work. So um, Energy 2028 was adopted in 2019. It really was the convergence of a lot of the work that Divya mentioned uh, with regard to um, students who are very active in divestment and was done by numerous groups of students with faculty and staff to put together a framework for how the college gets to 100% renewable energy sourcing, cuts its consumption of energy by 25%, and integrates that and divestment into its educational mission. So uh, those things came together. The trustees um, a, approved a package of, of those four elements and said, get to work, get it done by 2028. Divestment's on a slightly longer time frame. And as Divya mentioned too, more recently, we've decided we need to add an, a justice and equity framework that cuts through all of these goals that we have for 2028 uh, that should inform our thinking and our acting around how we do it. Um, going back in time, if I can, there we go. Uh, I wanna go back to 2003 when we set our first carbon reduction goal. And this um, came from um, uh, a strong sort of feeling from the faculty and staff and students that Middlebury needed to take some leadership on the climate issue. Um, we had a, have an environmental council who worked with a winter term class. We had an economics and a chemistry professor lead a course with about 20 students who prepared a portfolio of projects that showed how the college could reduce its levels of carbon emissions by 10% below its 1990 levels by 2012. One of those recommendations was we switch over our fuel sources from number six fuel oil to heat and power the campus to wood chips, which are a very abundant, renewable, local natural resource uh, in Vermont. So uh, we did that in a, and we did that on the presumption that it was carbon neutral and that is a very debatable and very rich topic for experiential learning, and we've done a lot of experiential learning around that. Be happy to talk more about it. Um, in 2007, we had a, a, a very active group of students, Divya mentioned the Sunday Night Environmental Group, uh, who proposed that the college adopt a goal of carbon neutrality by 2016. Um, it's a fascinating story about how we, over the course of the year, um, how the trustees agreed to do that. And I, be happy to go into more detail uh, later. And then um, finally, I just wanted to touch on um, what are some of the, the reasons that we've been successful in setting some very bold and ambitious goals around sustainability and uh, carbon and climate, sorry. Um, I just wanna to touch on those um, first students have been very important agents of change and willing partners to make that change happen over the course of the year. And, and Middlebury is a place where uh, idealism and hard work can actually result in substantive change uh, of the institution and beyond. Um, we're good at consensus. We're also good at contention. Um, but we have found a way to get to consensus on a lot of these issues even though it's a, a, a long and sometimes uh, uncomfortable process. We have good governance structures in place. We collaborate, we're open. Uh, we understand what in interdependent leadership means and, and we've worked well together to do that. And then finally, a lot of the solutions we've come up with to address this issue, we've done with an eye toward how can that be beneficial beyond the college. Um, and so I'm gonna stop there and I guess we'll, I'll turn it over to Zach. Thank you.
Hello, I graduated in 2018 and uh, I'm gonna share some pictures, but I worked a lot on uh, Energy 2028 as well. And uh, just to kind of set the stage for you a little bit on that, that was a, that was a, a long process. It started my uh, freshman year, uh, my first year and uh, in some little shape and form and, and really started to grow and add in different pieces as we brought in lots of different groups. Uh, and, and that was a really cool process for me because it even continued beyond when I graduated. And so I was really excited in 2019 when it, went, when it finally went before the board and passed. Uh, and that was just a really cool, I mean, the process took time, but we got there because we brought in lots of different stakeholders. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the experiential learning pieces that kind of play a part in Middlebury. So that was Energy 2028 was one of them. Another is uh, some work. Uh, these are solar de a solar decathlon house on the Middlebury campus. This is the 2013 entry that uh, I actually lived in this house. And so the picture, the main picture is actually a school group we brought in from a local elementary school. And we brought them in to do a, a, a tour for the field trip so they could learn about how, how living sustainably kind of could they could live sustainably in their own lives and how this house worked. And, and these were student projects. This was a hundred students, sometimes 50, sometimes just 20 coming together to build these two houses and enter into the national competition. Uh, the 2011 one placed fourth in the nation and the 2013 one, which you're looking at right now, uh, placed eighth. And we took this, and so it was really Middlebury against the giants of big engineering schools and, and uh, doing some really awesome work uh, and building these really cool structures that, that last and have a legacy today. And Jack, if you could flip to the next slide. Um, one of the great things too is then we took some of that energy and in 2018, I, I actually led a team for the design portion of, of the solar decathlon where we designed a brand new elementary school. And, we, and so we weren't gonna build this in, per, in reality because it's very expensive and very large to build an elementary school, but we partnered with the town of Middlebury to actually help them envision what they might want if they were to build a new school. And so we worked very closely with the, the local elementary school in building the design that you see in the upper right there. That's the first floor model. And in the bottom right is the actual, like the main hub of the building. And so is this really also kind of taking some of the experiential learning we, uh, we found it through this project and having the students there. And, and the, main, the people are some of the team that participated. And we actually took that all the way to the, uh, to the finals and won in our category. So that was a really exciting uh, achievement, uh, something we're all very proud of. And uh, just to kind of, kind of where you can go from there, I actually took all my experiences and I'm now a, a master's student in building technology, Jack, if you could flip, yeah, uh, at, at MIT. And I uh, basically, I work with, uh, we're working to make it easier for cities who have climate and energy goals uh, to reduce their emissions and figure out exactly what they need to do to make the upgrades to meet their climate goals. So some of the work we've done at Middlebury, but now making it so that everyone uh, around the country and the world actually uh, can do, build these energy models to, to make that happen. So it's been really fun. Uh, and I've learned, I've taken a lot of where I'm going now from my time at Middlebury. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jack and Zach. I was on campus as a student when the first two large solar decathlon projects were happening. And it really was inspirational to see the amount of teamwork across several disciplines and not just the environmental studies department um, unfold. And, and one of those moments where you really appreciate being at a liberal arts college because you see the talent from across all these disciplines really being at the top of their game and creating something tangible. Uh, passing it on now to Checo. Hi, uh, my name is Chekom Kocheko, um, class of 2022. I'm currently majoring in computer science and economics. And uh, for me, uh, the decision to come to Middlebury College was partly made by the fact that Middlebury has a very strong environment uh, program. And so throughout my two years here at Middlebury, and this is my third year, I've been trying to do a lot of things uh, in the environment. And one specific thing that um, I, st I appreciate uh, to have done here is uh, taking part in the School of Environment uh, in 2019. So the School of the Environment is a summer program, a six week program offered by the Middlebury uh, Department of Environment. And so uh, previously it used to be here in Vermont, uh, but uh, for 2018, 2019, it, was, uh, uh, it, it took place in China. 
And what we basically uh, learned in that uh, six weeks was um, how different uh, disciplines, so for example, economics, uh, computer science, biology, or psychology, how all these things come together and make uh, the, um, how all these things uh, affect the environment. And the biggest thing that I've taken from this uh, program or the environment, this environment program here at Middlebury is how we balance the three E's of the environment, and that is economics, ecology, and equality. And um, um, so the lessons I got from um, the School of the Environment are what uh, have continued to guide me in the decisions I make. So for example, my career choices, uh, things I want to do for the summer, or even when I go home, activities I want to engage in even here at school. And actually a few of my friends uh, changed their major uh, and uh, from just economics to environmental economics, which is a good thing considering that uh, 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 climate is becoming a bigger and bigger issue every day. And um, in the future years, we need people who understand different, different disciplines and the environment very well for us to, if we want to survive and not uh, become extinct. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chaco. Um, passing it on now to, to Megan. Welcome everybody. Um, my name is Megan Brakeley and I have the great pleasure of serving as the food and garden educator at the Knoll. Um, I'm an alum from 2006 and um, I share my screen here. So, uh oh, I gotta move the window out of the way, sorry. Um, so the Knoll was founded by students in 2003, it's about a three acre site of which uh, about an acre is in garden. And our mission is really quite broad. Um, and the main ideas of the space are about connection and regeneration. Um, this includes food justice and food systems and um, also production of food. Um, I think you can probably see this bar of folks, so I'm just gonna keep moving you, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we do a lot of different types of um, projects on campus and we help to foster connections with our local community um, and, and the local food system, which is really quite robust and we really view community members as experts and a, a real wealth of knowledge to tap into. Um, oh gosh. I didn't quite make my slideshow right, I'm sorry. Um, so here you can see, um, this is Maisie Anrod on the right-hand side doing her thesis research with our honeybees in partnership with, um, with a local beekeeper, Ross Conrad. Um, every year we host the environmental studies intro natural science and the environment class for field experiments. So here we're taking some soil samples um, and checking that out. This is um, Professor Maria Trumpler who is at Yale College who came um, to work with our FoodWorks program a couple summers ago and do a cheese tasting of some specialty local cheese. And um, volunteers and paid student interns uh, during the academic year and also in the summer help to steward and care for all aspects of the garden and the site. And we have um, some active projects and partnerships with some really cool groups like the Land Institute out in Salina, Kansas, the Abenaki Nation, our local food shelf, and many, many other different partners. Um, and the, um, it's also a space where folks come to gather. Um, and in a typical year, we fire up the pizza oven every Friday for a work party. Um, and groups can also reserve the space to, to host their own events out there. Um, so you can read more on our website. Um, go.middlebury.edu slash null and there's a lot of good stuff there and I am really grateful to get to share a little bit about it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Megan. Yeah, so from our, our six wonderful panelists, we're getting a sense of, of, of various different aspects of how life at Middlebury interconnects with the environment, interconnects with ideas of sustainability. Um, and so we're gonna take a second now to transition 
to Q and A's. And while I do that, I'm going to share my screen here, and it's just got the names of of all our panelists up there, as well as the admissions office uh, contact information. So if you do want to connect with with any of our wonderful panelists, uh, certainly get in touch with us at the admissions office. As you can see, you also have my email address there if you want to get in touch with me personally. And we're more than happy to connect you with any of these wonderful resources, if not others that relate to this topic across campus.